it gives birth to things that are a little bit chaotic. It gives birth to things that can become evil. The roots of evil on the world are in the world of toads. It's not the actual evil. And once we understand that, it's like going back to the analogy of the king and the, mm. the hired prostitute. Once we understand that the prostitute doesn't really want to be with you. They're not interested in you. <laughs> Even though they say they want to be with you, they don't want to be with you. Which is really true. Cool. I never knew that. Nothing. Some people don't know that. And the, th the very thing that you desire, that you think like, oh, this is what I really, you know, this is tempting me. God is at the root of that temptation. <coughs> Hiring it, so to speak, putting it in your wiring to tempt you. And you have to find a way to, and he wants you to pass the test. Does the tohu come from Noga? Does the come from? Yeah, I also wanted to know the connection. Shalosh Klipot Tameim. It's not yet so much a discussion of of Shalosh Klipot Tameim. There's later on that only becomes an operating discussion in the world of of um, of Bria. But yes, the antecedents for the Klipot are already in tow. But they're the source of evil, not evil. So. That's one of the chapters of the world and the Kudim is to talk about it's 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 one of those fine lines where it starts discussing all these kind of negative aspects of them. Yet at the same time we say that all the negative things that we ascribe to Tohu are more in line with the source. The way the way uh, um, Shaya Berkowitz, a uh, uh, Chabad Mashpia in, in Los Angeles, explained to me because there's a section in Tanya that has a has a discussion of the prostitute that the king hires to test his son in. So the way Abshaya explained to me is that it's not that the king doesn't want to be seen going into the brothel hiring the prostitute. He hires somebody who hires somebody who hires somebody <laughs> who hires the prostitute. In other words, when we when we talk about the world of Nikudim, it's like the time the king hires somebody. It's not yet the prostitute. It's still many levels removed from the person who's going to really tempt the, the prince. So the answer is, to your question, not yet. But we still use many words that do convey a sense of some form of klipa relative to, let's say, the world of Akunim. So it's all, again, it's all about relativity to what we're comparing it to. To the world of Shalosh Klippos HaTameos, that's in our world? No, it's not. But relative to what it was coming out of, yes, there's some element of, of the source of evil there. It's already turning towards that which can make us fall. So, and and that's, a, that's a section that we'll have to study and, and really, um, really get to know. What's beautiful about, about the actual text that we're going to spend uh, uh, you know, quite a bit of time studying over the next months, I hope, is that each one of these questions, like some of the things you raised, that's a chapter. You know, that's like a whole section that, that will discuss, is it evil? What's the, and it go back and forth explaining all these kind of fine-tuned elements of things that will confound and, and exhilarate you. So that's one of the things that we're going to, that we're going to have a chance to do as we as we delve deeper into it. So, so, but getting back to the, the ultimate purpose and, and why we're here is a little bit kind of an understanding of what the um, Baal Shem Tov says, which is, it says, a man should not be with his sister, for it is a kindness. So the Baal explains in one of his most controversial statements that he could ever state, why would you use the word chesed, kindness, to say something which is forbidden? Usually we associate something that's kind with something you should do, a mitzvah. Imagine somebody went and said everybody should be kind. Oh, look, the verse says, man, incest is kind. So 
So why is it a kindness? So the Bashanta says what it is is a meditation. That when somebody feels an attraction, a yearning towards somebody, they should realize that, that it's, it's not so that they should actually be with that person. Specifically, of course, when the person is forbidden to them. Sister, you can't be with your sister. What it is, is that it's, a, it's instead of, you could, it, it is, under certain circumstances, again, this is one of the things that Netanya warns the initiate not to try, because it's only for advanced practitioners, but the idea, the Malshamta doesn't really get into who it's for, the idea is that the person will then take the idea that they love somebody, and say, well, where's the source of that love coming from? It's coming from HaKadosh Baruch it's coming from God. But in particular, where is it coming from? The world of Nikudim, the world of Tahu where something that seems like a little crazy, you know? Where, why would somebody be attracted to something that's wrong? Because the broken vessels of Tohu, which are very powerful, couldn't be contained, are present in our world, in our experience. So the question is how to find the source of the love. How to make, the, how to make that love a love of the love of the universe. How to go up with it rather than down with it. Very tricky. But by knowing that the world of Tohu is a world that God created with this, the, the Ari says very clearly, it was planned so that we can, when these experiences happen, we can work through them more effectively. So that not only are we given free choice, but we can do the fixing as well, the tikkun that's required. Same thing with the Jew. He wants to go out with a non-Jewish girl. She loves him. Everything's nice. She smiles. She's a beautiful, great cook. What's wrong? How could you say no to a great cook? <coughs> <laughs> She's already half Jewish then. <laughs> that's, that's why you have the... How did we get to the kindness? How did all that... So the answer, the answer is... The answer is chesed hu, is that be aware of the source of the chesed. Meditate on Hashem's chesed. The source of it, you think it's just a lust, a physical desire. No, that's the, that's the dangerous part of it. The true part of it is that this chesed alyon, it's, come, it, it's the fallen shards of what originally started as God's love in the world of Toh and then broke the vessel and became an illicit love. But if you could take it back to the light of Tohu, and then, to, then you could, <clears throat> you know, before the sphere, before the breaking, you'd, you'd rectify it. You'd fix it. Okay, so when a person finally works out that he's not blaming his mother or his father for his upbringing, and he's not blaming people for who he is, then he starts going into the, the way the world was created, why there's different drives, different energies. That's the next level of how he understands himself. If he's gotten out of all the family and all the father stuff and the mother stuff. Because then other things are pushing him and pulling him. So not, he can't blame his parents anymore. Well, father and mother, you know, it's, they're, they're, they're convenient. <clears throat> and I'm sure we can blame a lot of things on, on parents. It's the new, the new generation, the new way of doing things. Um, but that's no question about it. But ultimately, your parents can blame it on their parents. <laughs> Till Adam and Eve. Meaning, it's about what it is to be a created being. And how to recreate the source of where you were created from. That realization, that recognition, changes things. We're always recalibrating. I read in the, in the New York Times science section, they had a very interesting article based on scientific research about people who are in relationships. That they will actually find unattractive things about, a, about somebody who would threaten their relationship. 
because they're trying to preserve their relationship. So they'll say, oh, that person's, you know, I, I have a huge nose. Well, nobody else thinks they have a huge nose. It's just that they want to find something wrong. They want to justify why they shouldn't be attracted to that person. In other words, in life, we can use justifications all the time to justify what we do. Or we could use justifications to do the right thing, even though it's not really true. You know, we can we can help ourselves with these techniques that people do. It's a game people play to help preserve a relationship. So the teachings of the Otsus Chaim, of the Eitz Chaim, of the Ari, they help us realign. The answer to your question is they help us realign with the, these shifts in our attitude. They help us reassess and realign our issues and our challenges. But isn't they don't take more, them away. They're still very present. Isn't there more logical? I don't know if I can use the word logic when I'm applying this, but there's a logical, a logical explanation to incorporate this in when you're dealing with this, uh, you know, with you know, with a brother and a sister, and obviously, and you're saying present. No, there's no logic to a brother <laughs> wanting to be with a sister. No, no, no. What I don't understand it. No, no, it's I a time of that. I don't what it, no, no. There's a logical no, explanation it, <laughs> as which I said I don't know if we're allowed to use the word logic when it comes to to the metaphysical, but. But if we're going to go back to the world prior to the, when the light was contained, before, before the, the, the tohu got, you know, broke loose from its containers, and we want to go back, why can't we say that a, a brotherly and sisterly love is, is, is acceptable and, and logical and, and something desired? It's the physical love that is not desired, which is, which is tohu. But if we go back to the to the tikkun, well, not even tikkun, but even prior to, to the, you know when it was contained, that and and that's the chesed, and that's the chesed. The Rebbeinu Shalom gave us the okay. chesed yeah. to say, you know, to say yes, we we're permitted, you know, we should be loving each other. The total but it is, be that. Like, is 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 the, is the bad part. But we correct. You know, but the question we, is, somebody who's in the tohu should realize that they're in the tohu. Yeah. No. And they have to go back to the source of the light right. of Torah, which is Chassidah, right. which so came from a pure Chassid. Right. So you either have to go back that direction or, or do Tikkun, which is the other direction. Obviously, you have to do both at the same time. You, have, middle, you have to do Tikkun. You always have to fix things. I, I think that what's great about the will of Nikudim in the Ari is that it's so much more than whatever you've heard about until now. Because everybody's heard there's the vessels and they broke. Right. And, and it's just... It's the difference between <clears throat> learning something in a very shidchiyistic way, meaning a very superficial way, and learning it something in a very in-depth way. And I think I'm really looking forward to doing this because every you know every week we can really get into a detail of the world of Nikudim, of the world of Tohu, until we really start working on our own uh, our own Tohu, our own Shvira uh, Sakelim, and hopefully we could use this for to start fixing our lives a little bit. So, Amen, my man. Thank you.